Hello, my name is Melissa Lee. I'm a designer, illustrator, and crafting enthusiast. I've been making my own stamps for a while, for crafting, packaging, and even some of my surface pattern design work. I think stamping and block printing is a really unique and fun medium that can open up a whole new avenue of creativity for you. So let's get to carving. So you want to carve out the negative space, i.e. everything that doesn't have any ink or pencil on it. Before I start carving my logo stamp though, I want to quickly demonstrate the types of cuts that the various blade tips make. You may want to practice on a piece of scrap rubber or linoleum just to get used to it. I'm going to demonstrate with a few of the blades that come with the Speedball Linoleum Cutter. First is the number 9 flat blade. You can use this to make super thin lines, but really it works best with linoleum rather than rubber uh, because it's a harder material, and I feel like uh, the lines just kind of get lost in rubber. The other four blades that it comes with are wedge cutters. The higher the number, the larger the cut. It includes numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5. You want to slide the tool along the rubber and flick up to break off the material. If you don't manage to break off the excess material that way, you can just pull on it gently to remove it. The harder you push down, the larger the wedge. So if you want really thin lines, you need to be delicate and precise with your blade and press down very gently. So you always want to cut away from yourself and make sure not to put your hand or finger on the other side of the rubber. I have been known to forget and stab myself a few times, so don't be like me. <laughs> or if you're determined to be like me and hold the stamp like I do, please wear a thimble or some sort of protective gear. I'm using a number five blade now, and as you can see, it cuts out a much bigger chunk of material. You can start with one of the small wedge blades I just demonstrated, but I like to use a single edge razor blade for a lot of my edges, and particularly for tricky sharp corners. I feel like I can get a cleaner, more precise cut this way, but your mileage may vary, so you should try both to see what you prefer. I start by cutting along the edge of the design, keeping the blade slanted away from the outline. Then I make a V cut, slanting the blade in the opposite direction to cut out a slice of the material. You're essentially making more or less the same cut that the wedge tool makes, but this gives you a little more control, especially for the super intricate or delicate sections of the design. I do go back and forth between using a razor blade and my smallest number one wedge blade when I'm cutting out the outlines like this. It just kind of depends on what you feel most comfortable with and what tool you feel gives you the best control in what sections of the design. You want to go slow and steady. It definitely takes some practice to feel confident in your carving abilities, but as long as you don't get hasty and try to rush it, you should be able to avoid making mistakes. That said, mistakes do happen, and uh, I've had to start over before, like completely, so, you know, it happens. If this is the first time you're trying this, I would definitely start with a less intricate design than what I'm demonstrating with, just to make things easier on yourself. I like to use a slightly larger V-shaped wedge blade to cut out more of the edges along where I already cut. And then once you've made all the outline cuts, you can use a larger rounded blade to cut out the middle sections. It's up to you how much you want to cut, like, you know, if, if you want to leave some uh, bits for some texture. I personally like a clean stamp look, so I cut out as much as I can. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.